Well, hello and welcome to Rediscover Who You Are, Become a Manifestation Queen. I'm so excited to have you join us today. I created this series to gain awareness, tools, and resources to heal your past, to live in the present, and to manifest a life full of happiness and joy. Make this series the best for you, and I I invite you to take action. These women, these speakers that have been coming on are sharing and pouring their hearts into you. So take action on something that they share with you so that you can get out of your head and back into your heart and live a life that you always dream of. Taking action is key. Knowledge without action is knowledge. Knowledge with action is transformation. I'm your host, Brenda Kiss, and I am so, so incredibly excited to be interviewing Hibiscus Moon today. Welcome, Hibiscus. Thank you, Brenda. This is so wonderful. I love what you just said about that knowledge without action. That's a really insightful. Um, I, I hope more, more people realize that just gathering up the knowledge is not enough. <laughs> it is not. You got to take action. Yep. Yes. So Hibiscus, I know that you were a former science department head turned crystal healer and self-proclaimed geo geek extraordinaire. (laughs) You're also the founder of the Hibiscus Moon Crystal Academy and the author of the book, Crystal Grids, How and Why They Work. How did you go from the head of a science department into healer (laughs) crystals? How did that, how did that happen? (laughs) Well, I was doing both at the same time for a while. Um, now I really don't see them as that separate at all because mm. of all the, the, all the places where they just merge together, but I've always been interested in crystals since I was very, very small, small child and always very inquisitive and interested in science. So I, you know, went into geology, got my master's of science in that area, and then also decided I wanted to teach. And I've always been teaching at some level, but I didn't realize the two like really came together so well uh, until I started exploring manifesting with crystal grids for myself. Um, And that exploration started right around the time that I discovered YouTube. And I think YouTube was a baby in 2007. So that's when the the journey began to just collide and come together. Wow. Can you share what a a crystal grid is and how you use that to manifest? Because I know what crystal grids are, but I might be people that don't even realize what they are. Absolutely. Yes. So I'm so glad to be here for this summit on manifestation and keys to manifestation, because that's how I got introduced to crystal grids. Like I said, I was interested in crystals and working with crystals, but crystal, a crystal grid is like for those people who are familiar with a vision board. You know, we we used to, that used to be really popular like 10 years ago, right? Create a vision board. I don't know. I think people still do it, but this was like a three-dimensional way to vision board by tapping into sacred geometry. And why that's important is that Mm -hmm. sacred geometry is the language our universe is built on. Mm -hmm. Not just our universe, the multiverse, meaning all the different universes that we think now exist they are built on sacred geometry, not the English language. So being able to convey what it is you're working on manifesting or changing or transforming, using the language of sacred geometry, which crystals are extremely adept at, I found that really interesting and very effective, highly effective. It was my introduction to the world of manifestation. Wow. Yeah. So you used a crystal board to help manifest your business or just in general? Everything. Wow. <laughs> wow. That's so awesome. Knock on wood, but anything that I, I've been successful at that I wanted to do, I've been able to manifest with crystals and crystal grids. So for me, it, it not to say that you can't do it without a crystal grid or without crystals, But I always liken it to, like in physics, we teach about tools. Tools allow you to get the same amount of work done with less energy. Crystals are the same way. Crystal grids are the same way. So you can use less, utilize less effort, get the same thing done, the same goal, achieve the same goal. But I feel it's so much easier because we're using the language of sacred geometry. Wow. So... 
I find this so fascinating because, <laughs> you know, tools enhance, like you said, enhance what you do. And so teaching people how to use these grids and teaching throughout the years, you know, what do you feel are your, are the keys to manifesting? Okay. So one of the things that I learned early on, uh, on my manifestation journey is to take like a, a bird's eye view of what's going on, not be so myopic, myopically focused on things, step back, widen the view, look at all the wonderful things that are happening in your life and not the things that you're lacking, because that's a, my, a, a mindset of lack. And that's not the place you want to be in when you're manifesting. You want to be grateful. So it's something I had to teach myself to reprogram my mind to do, to do on, and I do it on a daily basis now, no matter how little I had, and I, I do come from humble beginnings, okay? I, you can always find something to be grateful for and be in that mindset of gratefulness. So maybe you have to start small like I did. And I was in a place of black mindset big time. I had to retrain my brain. So I might not have even realized I was grateful for something until I really examined a little bit more, widened the view. Um, and then, you know, just realizing, oh my gosh, I have all these wonderful things and I'm sitting here wasting energy on what I don't have or complaining about things that I don't have. That's not going to manifest you anything. You've got to get out of that place right. and see how you're wealthy in other places. You're, you're always wealthy in some place, even if it's just the air that you're breathing, you're alive, you're, you've got wealth of air that you're breathing. But if you're focusing on what you don't have, I feel an attitude adjustment is the first step to turning the situation around. And crystals can help with that too, definitely. Um, but I love to work with crystal grids to support me in whatever my next vision is. Because like I said before, it makes the work so much more efficient. And they do such a wonderful job. They're just so effective at it. Okay, so this stimulates two thoughts. I do okay. love the idea of being gratitude and getting yourself into that abundant mindset instead of the lack. That's the only way to create, right? We cannot create from lack. But two thoughts that I have is one, maybe just share how crystals work. Like I, I when I started working with crystals, I didn't have any understandings of them. I mean, I can tell you I have tons of crystals in my office, but um, how do they, like, what do they work and, and how do they work? And then do you, and this is a separate question. So I'm asking you two questions at one time. Is that okay? Sure. Pilot <laughs> on. The second question is, is there specific grids for different intentions and manifestations? Okay. So the first part is a big question. How do crystals work? Um, I can, I can talk about that for months, right. <laughs> but, but to boil it down to its simplest essence, um, basically, okay. So I always like to have a little show and tell here's a clear quartz crystal crystals look this way, beautiful and angular with straight lines, very different than how the rest of mother nature looks right. Usually doesn't have straight lines. And that's because like we said before, sacred geometry is at its core. What makes a crystal a crystal is that its molecules are arranged, not randomly as we are, but in a very structured, repeating geometric pattern. That's the definition of a crystal. So in being that way, it means that what I like to call the dominant oscillatory rate of the crystal, or you might say, what? what is she talking about? There's a basic frequency or, or base resonant frequency that comes from everything really, but with a crystal, because of that very highly structured molecular pattern, it's very stable. It doesn't get knocked out of whack easily like we do. It's very stable because of that sacred geometric perfection that it inherently holds in its molecular structure. So that's what makes crystals very different. That's what allows them to influence our energy so easily. We're easily influenced. Crystals are not. They're kind of like... Um, a higher vibration. I hate to use that term because it's, it can get misconstrued, but um, they're the influencer that influences us. So now what was the second? <laughs> I forgot. Yeah, this, that's really awesome. And I, I just want to share just real quickly. I had a set of uh, two crystals that I got out in Arizona 
and they sat on my desk and not much. I mean, they just sat there. I didn't know where they put, I didn't know where they belonged. I know they didn't belong on my desk. And then I got this clear quartz with a healer, um, healing, uh, healer crystal uh, element in it. Uh-huh. And then all of a sudden it was like, it was like a grid. All of a sudden they created a, 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 a trinity and mm. it became my altar. I, 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 it's oh. just amazing how powerful these crystals can be without realizing for me, like with not even realizing how powerful they are. And so that was kind of my second question is like, do you, is there different grids to manifest different things or to support you in different ways? I mean, I know crystals are used way beyond manifestation as well. Right. Okay. Yes. Um, the, okay. So that first of all, I always tell my students, there is no right or wrong like, oh gosh, you use that crystal grid for that. That is so wrong. <laughs> you know, the, it's got to go with your intuition. What is your intuition calling you to do? Having said that though, I do like to give people guidelines because very often they'll say, well, what kind of crystal grid can I do for manifesting a new career? Or what kind of crystal grid can I do for um, ushering in transformation into my, uh, my health? well-being. Um, so you can do a crystal grid for any purpose that you can think of. Absolutely any purpose you can think of. I, over the years, developed, you know, certain guidelines, but I would always tell people, you know, here's one for love, or here's one for manifesting that next job you want, or whatever. But use it as a loose guideline, you know, somewhere to get started. And then once they see they get confidence from evidence. People get confidence from the evidence that they receive from the good results from doing the crystal grids. Once they see how powerful they are themselves with empowering this crystal grid to help them to manifest, then people take it upon themselves to start going off in their own direction and do and, and trust their intuition mm. and build their own crystal grids and do what they feel called to do. What's going to communicate their manifestation goal to source energy most clearly. And they begin to trust themselves and get very confident in doing that. So I, I love to see that. I love that. Oh God, you're stimulating so many thoughts in my mind I don't, I, I, with crystals and manifesting, you know, yeah, you know, I'm very, in, um, let's say goal oriented, you know, I want to expand to my highest version of myself and so I'm like oh I can have a grid for this I can have a grid for expansion I can have a grid for this goal and that goal that's it's very awesome very yeah. cool how does how does the and and I believe and I don't know if, if you have the same beliefs but I believe when we go to manifest something we really go the manifestation comes for us to grow so like if you want to manifest a new career, you have to step into that version of you that creates, that can create that um, career. So I, I, I look at that as like elevating your consciousness, elevating your healing, elevating uh, the frequency that you live in. Right. Um, how does, how does your teaching, I know you certify teachers in, in crystal I certified crystal practitioners. So, and, and Brenda, let me tell you, they've taken this in so many different directions. I can't, I never would have fathomed all the different things they're doing with that certification as crystal practitioners, but they have taken it into every single realm, 144 different directions. Wow. Yeah. And, and as they become certified, how do you feel or how have they, you know, or maybe they've shared, like, how has it helped them expand their consciousness, expand who they are? Oh, exponentially working with the crystals um, has allowed for, again, this big confidence boost. Um, and I fell upon that by accident because I was a science teacher, you know, and at first glance, like we were talking about before, like, whoa, how do these two worlds collide? I don't see it. Like, how do these two things come together? But really being able to understand and deliver the science in easy to understand terms gives people huge confidence. When they have confidence because of evidence, things that they've been doing, that just exponentially, it just feeds, it's like a positive feedback loop. Mm. It exponentially feeds the future endeavors. So it allows for these effortless yet huge transformations because they so trust in what they're able to do. 
and crystals just make it so much easier. Mm -hmm. um, was there a part of your question there? I feel like there was more to it that I kind of left out. But no, I mean, it's just how, you know, you, you speak about the evidence and, and um, them receiving evidence that things are working. I was just asking, like, how have you seen your students that get certified? How have you seen it um, elevate their consciousness and who they are? Oh, well, the, the crystals just open up your consciousness so that you can you can do things that you never thought were possible before. And things that you didn't think, things that you weren't even thinking about, that weren't even on your radar, all of a sudden are part of your normal everyday world and are just happening. And I've seen so many people do things that I, like I said, I didn't have these visions for them. They envision these things for themselves and envision bigger and better things than I ever could have thought up. You know, when I first started this, I thought it was just, you know, we're, we're doing crystal healing for people on the table, you know, laying on of stones. And that's all I saw with my, you know, blinders on. They've expanded it into all these amazing places. And there's so many students, we're working, we're working towards the goal of having 3,000 successful graduates by the end of this year throughout the planet, all over planet. And I think just about every aspect or realm or area of a career you can think of, they've found a way to infuse crystals into it and have found their niche. And there's never this, this thing of, oh, well, how many people can be doing crystals? People were asking me this in 2015, crystals have peaked, right? That we're, we're at the peak. Here we are 2022. I see no peak in sight. It just keeps going up, 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 and more and more people coming into it and finding new avenues to express themselves and find these avenues to transformation and doing all these amazing things they never would have seen themselves doing. And I mean, Brenda, I'm talking about people that you wouldn't expect would be part of this world. Judges, um, doctors, like MD doctors, but they're just, you know, we're doing like Western medicine also doing this. Um, okay. Astrophysicists. Wow. This is what it has attracted. And that these things just blow my mind. Then of course, let's not even get into the creatives, you know, all the creative people and all the creative things they've done with crystals, things that I never ever envisioned, not on my radar at all. Wow. It was a collective, a co-creation, a co-creation in its truest essence. Yeah. And it started with your trust in manifesting for yourself, right? You're, it, it all starts, I feel it starts with us and we start to trust us and then our teaching then just ripples out in that trust and faith. Yes, exactly. And so I'm not surprised anymore when people come up to me with these amazing, beautiful stories of what they've manifested in their lives and how much their lives have changed. You know, a lot of times they'll come into the course and they'll say, you know, I just wanted to figure out about crystals for myself. Didn't want to share this with others. Yeah. 85% of the time, and we have very specific numbers on that because we, we measure it. I'm a scientist at heart. So 85% um, of the time that changes for them and they do want to share it. That completely changes. They say, I don't want anything to do with sharing. I just wanted to know this knowledge for myself. And then next thing you know, now they're just doing all these amazing things for other people and they never saw themselves doing that. And that was not their intention. That was not my intention. But it's just beautiful to have been front row and center for this. Yeah, I actually have three clients, one currently and one year, two years ago that took your certification and one used it to really um, to work with her children. She was a homeschool teacher. And so she worked with her children with crystals and really helping them to uh, stay grounded and get present with their yeah. work and, and things like that. And then she's now into uh, um, dog training and she brings her love for crystals into her practice. I mean, she's not putting the crystals on the dogs, I don't think, but it helps her. Like she uses the crystals to work with the, the you dog. Can, you can do that with the animals. Yeah, we, we, we teach that too. And animals and kids are like natural allies with crystals. They just fall into place so easily, way easier than us adults. It's, it is. And they're our truest teachers, right? children yes. and animals they can teach us a lot about living absolutely teach us a lot about energy and 
interacting with energy. Yeah, absolutely. And I, and I just want to share this other woman. She was, she worked with me for, for about a year and she also took your course and she had so much social anxiety and, um, uh, just anxiety in, in, in general. And she worked with, she, she learned about crystal grids through you. And she weren't learned about like, um, I think Rose quartz baths. I, I don't oh, know. Yes. And it, she became a whole nother woman. Like it was just magnificent. And now she, she teaches and runs healings and, you know, really started to have her open up to pass. Like you said, just you know, when you find a modality of healing that works for you, such as crystals, it begins to open you up. And that's why these, in my opinion, these people that are taking these certifications from you, they're finding themselves, they're coming back home into their bodies, into their hearts. And that's where the creative and that's where the expansion happens. And so crystals are such a great tool to do that. I agree. And I, I love that story that you just told. I am so happy every time I see that happen. And it's, I feel like I'm just a, a facilitator, you know, like people know this stuff. They just need to remember it. Yep. And that's why when it comes rushing back in, it comes in so fast and furious and they're like, okay, I got this. I got this. I know what I'm doing. I know this. I know this. It's so true. It's so yeah. True. What is, um, to start to wrap things up, what's one, one thing that you could share that would help women remember who they are or how to begin to manifest or create a life they love? Okay. I am a boundary queen. Mm. <laughs> so I think having good solid boundaries that you're very clear on and consistent on, you have to be consistent with them. And so you're clear on them because some people aren't even clear themselves with their boundaries. They're like, mm, what does that really mean? But then you have to be consistent. And um, you have those in place. That's really going to help you to remember your sovereignty, remember who you are. Mm -hmm. And as far as a crystal, I brought one here with me. Black tourmaline, this is black tourmaline, is ideal for keeping those, helping you to keep those boundaries in place. So whether it is um, the part about coming up with the boundaries, the good, healthy, solid boundaries, and then being consistent with them. Black tourmaline can help with both of those things. It's very, very protective. So once you've got them in place, it's going to protect them. Great. So I just think of like, okay, with my kids, I do so good. And then I don't do good. I, I give in. So that would be something that I could use, like to hold on to, like set my boundaries with them and have some black tourmaline around me. Right. Exactly. Do his boundaries with them. Mm -hmm. And with yourself. With ourselves. That's the most important one. Yeah. And that's the hardest one to keep. Right. Yes. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I mean, it all starts with ourselves. If we can't yes. keep our own boundaries, then we're not going to keep boundaries with others. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So we talk so much about crystals and manifesting and energy. Um, and I know that you have a special giveaway for our listeners today. Yes. So um, it is a create your own sacred space with crystals e-kit. So there's a meditation to get you in the right frame of mind. There's an ebook, step-by-step -step instructions on how to do this, where to begin, what crystals are great for this, and then a private tour of my own sacred space and crystals and things like that. So there's a lot in there. And you can just go to hibiscusmoongift.com, hibiscusmoongift.com, and you sign up for my newsletter, and then you'll get that gift right away. Amazing. That sounds awesome. Thank you it's so fun. much. Oh, I can't wait. I'm going to do it. I'm going to grab the free gift too. That's awesome. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. It's a lot of fun. Um, yeah. I think anytime you take that time to create that space and to utilize the tools that we were given on this planet, right? So um, Hibiscus, I, I can't thank you enough for coming on today and sharing your wisdom around crystals and manifesting. Is there any final thoughts, any final things that you would like to share to help these, the listeners today? The one thing I want to say, and I think I already touched on this before because I'm saying it all the time. I forget how many times I say it, but I want to really drill this home is trust your intuition. It always knows. So you're not sure what crystal to use or you go to a crystal shop, you're not sure what crystal to get, what crystal do I need for this? Don't always just rely on the books or ask the person behind the counter. Trust yourself. Mm. Your higher self knows. 
So if you're really attracted to a crystal in the shop, maybe there's a reason for that. And maybe it's not the most beautiful one, but it's the one that you probably most need. Your instincts know, your belly wisdom knows, trust your intuition. That's amazing. I have a question around that because you're science space and I yes. feel science is kind of the, could be the opposite of intuition, but how, how does, um, do you feel the knowledge and the understanding enhances your intuition? Oh, Bias it? Yes, probably. But um, I also follow this. I've, you have too, Brenda, you've learned all kinds of different teachings and modalities. I don't swallow everything hook, line, and sinker. And even if it's science, oh, this is science, facts and figures. Science can't measure everything. There's so much science cannot do, okay? I, again, with the intuition, I keep what resonates with me. Mm. All right, you might cut out. You keep what resonates oh. with you and- And I leave the rest. Uh, I yeah. leave the rest behind. Is my microphone okay right now? Yep. Yeah, no. Okay. Right. All right. So I don't have to accept everything because there's a scientific reason behind it. Some things fit, some things don't, some things feel right, some things don't. You know, so you kind of have to feel into it again using your intuition. Um, but there's but the science, uh, as much as I love it, it's not the end all be all. And it certainly cannot measure everything. And we certainly cannot prove everything with science. So yeah, it's nice to have that scientific backbone. It's great for building confidence when you have to stand up to the people who are like, oh, you believe in all this hoo-hoo with the crystals. It's all, you're so gullible. Oh yeah, and then you rattle off some science and then they sit up and listen. Right, right. They're like, oh, I didn't know that. But also at the same time, you know, we've, we've had scientific beliefs that we've proven wrong later. Right. So, you know, you gotta, you've got to, again, feel into it intuitively, take what resonates, leave the rest. I love that. Cause I feel the women that I come into contact with often is like, they want to trust their intuition, but they want the information. They want to trust their intuition, but they want the information. And what you're saying is Take the information and still trust yourself. And I I, I love that. Yep, awesome. exactly. Awesome. Yeah. Well, thank you so much for today. I so appreciate you and your energy. And um, this has really been an honor for me. You've been in my life unknowingly to you for eight years. So it's been awesome to interview you. And um, for you to listen or take action on something that hibiscus shared with you so that you can take this information and transform your life. We'll talk to you next time.